we did it, uh, two studies on this before we went into Thanksgiving on last Sunday. So we are continuing, and it has to do with renewing our mind. But the topic today is called meditation. Praise the Lord. Meditation. Meditation. And uh, I want you to put Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. 5 to 7. Praise the Lord. That place where there is an evil. Remember, it's called an evil. Is it? Am I reading what right? It's an evil. Correct? Okay. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Folly, folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. That is, the, this folly is contrasted with the rich. This person is not supposed to be there. So he's taking the place of the rich. The, seat, the rich sit in low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So the juxtaposition here is that the people that some people are not to put, are not where they're supposed to be. Some people position has been given to others. Praise the Lord. And by the time we finish, you will know that it's all about you. Praise the Lord. You are that prince. Because it, um, Revelation 5, they say that God has made you princes, kings and princes unto him. Okay? And you know, um, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Though he was rich, though he was, uh, he was rich, for your sake he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might be what? Might be rich. So when he's talking about the rich, I don't want you to think of um, um, the gates. I want you to put yourself in where, where this rich is mentioned and the prince is mentioned. But he says it's a great folly. It's a, an evil that princes are walking as servants on the earth. And servants are the one riding upon the horses. It's an evil. So for God, it's an evil when you are not in your proper position. Praise the Lord. When you have not reached the destiny. And I want to tell us here, every one of us, that the destiny that God has planned for every one of us is not where we are right now. It's not where we are. Because if Jesus died for it, then think about the Father, how he look at it, that we are not, you haven't, how do I put it, you have not um, taken everything I have offered. Praise the Lord. Did my son die even? No, it's not only about salvation. Our redemption is not only about salvation. Salvation from sin is awesome, but there's much more. Praise the Lord. Now, what has been missing in the whole Christian, the whole Christianity is not just us here. The missing link is meditation. And that's what we want to talk today. The missing link is what? Meditation. Because you will hear me today. It's just natural that what you hear, and especially when you don't even write anything, you can only retain, you, can, you can't even retain. By next Sunday, if I tell you what did I preach today, you won't retain much. It's just that. If you write it down 30%, that's why it's important to always write down something. You'll retain by 30%. But then after one month, if you don't go back to it, everything is gone. Do you see the reason why we struggle? Praise the Lord. Now, what is meditation? It says it's close or continue to... Before I, I go into the definition of meditation, is there anybody here that doesn't know how to worry? I'm asking a question. Is there anybody? I'm assuming that every one of us here have worried before, have we? So you know you can worry. You know the tendency to worry that you can worry. So every one of us can worry, right? So I just want to continue with this study that every one of us can do what I'm teaching us today. Praise the Lord. If every one of us can worry, every single one of us can do what we're learning today. And I'm throwing a challenge to you because we have prayed it. I said it. She brought it down and we prayed it. In one month, something must happen. One month. And you're going to obey God. Praise the Lord. So, what is meditation? I've told us because it's worry, every single one of us worries. So, every single one of us can meditate the word of God. Because worrying is meditation. But what is wor meditation? We're meditating on our limited abilities. That is worry. We're meditating on um, how am I going to do this? My salary does not match to what I'm earning. Or this person is sick. What if they die? Okay? All of that is meditation. But meditating 
Maybe Satan will give you a thought. And you start going over that thought in your mind over and over and over. That is meditation. Praise the Lord. And that is what the Bible calls worry and anxiety. Now we're going to use that same mind that God has given you. Because God gave us a mind for good, not for worrying. That same mind you're going to start applying it now. So meditation is close or continued thought. The turning or revolving a subject in the mind. So when I'm thinking about something and I'm going over it and over it in my mind, that is meditation. Okay? Now, it can also be defined as serious contemplation. When you're contemplating something and you are, you're focused on it, praise the Lord, you're focused on it. Another thing is to resolve in the mind, imagine or premeditate. You know what they call premeditated murder? Why do they call it premeditated murder? Because you have thought of it. You have thought of it. And now plan on how you will carry it out, the options. That is why it's called premeditated murder. And that is why in the court of law, once it's like, it's not like something came upon you suddenly. Mm -hmm. That, okay, I just acted out of impulse. The fact that that thing has been happening and happening, the court will condemn you because they say you've thought on it and you now carried it out. Praise the Lord. Now, anything that is happening in our lives, you, your imagination will play a role on how it plays out. Whether it's going to be successful or whether you're going to fail. Some of you were not here. I had thought about what is called subconscious mind. It is part of your mind. The mind you know is divided into two. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Okay? The conscious mind is, I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to fry egg. I will do it this way. If you're learning to cook for the first time, when you're going to cook for fry an egg, you remember the steps your mother told you or you called your sister. You say, first of all, beat egg. You say, I'm beating egg. After this, what next step do I take? I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. The same thing we learn in a car. Is that not correct? Uh, the instructor will tell you, what. Um, after this, put your distance. Praise the Lord. So, now, when you are now doing it, after you have done it for a while, through repetition, listen very well, through repetition, once you've done it five times or more, you learn it by rote. Is that not so? Now, you don't come and go to the kitchen and start saying, um, I will break the egg. I will put it in the oven. I will do this. You don't do that anymore. Automatically, you're doing it. Is that not correct? Now, that automatic part, the subconscious mind, God gave it to us so that you don't go through repetition anymore. Okay? It helps us to learn. It helps us to do things automatically. When I enter the car to drive, I don't say put the key in the ignition. Unfortunately, subconscious mind is affected by two things. Repetition and traumatic experiences. Emotional traumatic experiences. So those repetitions can be, now, if I have lived in a household where there is violence all the time, my mom is beating my dad, okay? Now, whatever, the other way around. <laughs> It can happen to. It can happen to. You don't know. It can happen. It can happen. It happened actually. Sometimes I have seen a family that the emotional uh, violence is the other way around. So, and because men are too ashamed, they can't even say. It's even worse because the man. How will I tell people that my wife is with me? <laughs> God will have mercy on us. Anyway, but what I'm trying to say now: repetition and emotional experience is trauma. Okay. Now. Think of experiences of poverty, the things that we grew up with, that your father will tell you, it is not enough, do this this way. All the habits we have formed, repetition and emotional, anything that has the power to grab your emotion, it is forming in your subconscious. Those things are there, seated. They haven't changed. Your becoming a Christian doesn't change those things. That is why the Bible talks about renewing your mind. It's the word that changes those things. So you can find out that I know I'm supposed to be rich, but why am I experiencing poverty? You can know that even in your habits, there are certain things I still do as if I'm in Africa. Why? That they meant the subconscious. Praise the Lord. The subconscious part. And when you renew your mind, the beautiful thing about the word of God is that when you do this renewal, it affects both the subconscious and the conscious mind. But it's something we must do. You must do it to make some that has failed repeatedly.
the subconscious now the default mode is failure. You know, like when you do something like computer, the default mode is what it goes to when you're not thinking. So when you're not taking a conscious decision, what is happening? Your decisions are made subconsciously. And you know the funny thing, unfortunately, it's 70% of our mind. The subconscious rate, 70. You see the role it plays, 70%. So it's not like, oh, it's only a small part of my mind. No, 70% of everything you do, the decisions you make are done subconsciously. It's very, very important. So what I'm teaching us today will take you all the things you don't understand. Why is it happening this way? This will change everything. Praise the Lord. This will change everything. So, now, now it says, what is biblical meditation? Biblical meditation is turning the word of God over in your heart until it produces revelation or spiritual insight. Now, I take a word that has to do with my situation. And I keep, remember what I told about repetition? Same thing. Confessing the word over and over again is also repetition. Is that not so? You confess over and over. Then you turn it in your mind. You are thinking on it. How does it apply to me? How does it apply to me? If this is the word of God, how does it apply to me? Are there other scriptures in the Bible that support this thing? How does it apply? How come I'm not experiencing it? As you keep doing it, as you keep doing it, you know what happens? At a time, when you do this, you begin to receive what is called insight. The Holy Spirit will begin to expand the scripture to you. What do I mean? That expanding may be, this is how you apply it to your life. Or it's not applied to your life. Or you need to do this to apply this to your life. Okay? Now, when you're doing it over and over and over and over, and you're repeating it, it begins to mark your subconscious. For a minimum change, 21 days. 21 days, but unfortunately, 21 days has to do with your conscious mind. Praise the Lord. 21 days has to do with what? Your conscious mind. For you to do it to the way that it affects you properly, it has to be a minimum of 67. 67. By 67 days, it starts forming what is called a groove in your mind. It begins to form that the things, I hope you know that even learning, everything we do, there's a place in our mind. It begins to affect you physically. This I'm not talking about biologically. It begins to form a groove in your mind. Now, if you let the truth pass, because the word of God is not something we do today or tomorrow we leave. Because the word of God is spirit and it is life. If you stop, okay, it has done up to a chain a day, but then you start experiencing. Let's say I notice that I'm prospering. Things are happening well with me. A man of God that God gave so much revelation and confession, confessing the word of God and all. Charles Caps. He said that for a two years period, he noticed that things were not happening in his life again. Meanwhile, he wrote that book, booklet I gave you is by Charles Caps. A lot of things on health and all. He said, go, why? God says because you left the word. The word is spiritual. Hello? The word of God is spiritual. It's not just the word. It is spiritual. What is spiritual? It has the power to change you and change your situation. So now, if now, after I notice that things are doing well for me and all, you stop, the things that are doing well will also stop. Do you understand me? This is our life. This is our life. It's not sometimes. It is our life because we are, you know, the mind is made of what? Spirit, soul, and body. You must continue to change to feed your spirit, which will affect your soul. Praise the Lord. So, biblical meditation, when we turn the word of God over and over and over and over, it produces revelation and spiritual insight. That's biblical meditation. Now, meditating God's word builds faith, which allows you to see with your spiritual eyes. You know and you know until you see it. Hello? Until you see it, you will not have it. Until you see what you're asking God for. Until the image inside is changed, nothing will happen outside. It is not because this is the way we are wired. That is the way God ordained it. You must see the change. The images inside must change. You must see yourself prospering. You must see yourself rich before you become rich outside. That is as simple as that. Now, remember what we are talking that changes the images. 
Remember the word. And how do you change image? Remember what we're talking about repetition. Praise the Lord. So, now, let's go to... Now, it says meditating God's word builds faith, which allows you to see with your spiritual eyes in the realm of the spirit. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1. 1. I can somebody read it in Amplified Classic for me? Does anybody have an Amplified Classic? If you can check it in your phone, you'll have Amplified Classic. If you are doing phone on the phone, you should have amplified classes. Does anybody? Okay, read it. Eleven one. Okay. Okay. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Now, if I'm believing God for a house, this is the way it happens. If I'm believing God for a house. I don't have money for a house, okay? But my faith is the title deed. Some versions will say faith is the title deed of what you hope for. Title deed. Faith is the title deed. What is a title deed? You know, like when you buy a house, they give you physical uh, uh, paper. That is the title. Now, your faith is the title deed of what you hope for. The evidence of things you cannot see. Physically see, but the seeing is inside. Praise the Lord. The seeing is inside. As you now, whatever it is, think about it. You must have come to a place where you really believe God and you're seeing it. That is when the change happens. Praise the Lord. Because the change must happen inside before it happens outside. That is the way it happens. That's the way it occurs. It doesn't change. Praise the Lord. Now, also meditation builds inner strength to believe and the ability to hold on to what you believe. You see, what, when we start out with something, Let's say we have a serious situation, and this is the story of every Christian. When we have a serious situation, hmm? you fast. Is that not so? You really, really go into God, and you believe God, and God is, you know, like you now know. You're not worried anymore. When we stop, what the problem with most of us is the longevity of our faith. Now, when, um, I think it's Mark 5, that Peter walked on water. Jesus said, where is your faith? Is that not the question? What, how did Jesus say? Say, where is your faith? Why did you doubt? If you think about it, Peter, of all the apostles, he's the only one that even shows great faith. Is that not so? Because he walked on water. The others are just there or sitting down. So when Jesus said, Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come. And God commanded him to, and he walked on water. He says, O ye of little faith, whenever Jesus is talking, it's not so much about the faith that you start with. It's the ability to live your faith until it produces what you're believing for. That's the problem most of us have. I want to challenge you that when you have the problem fast, you fast, is that not so? By the time you fast and pray, and you are, you know, like the thing is crowding you like this. After a while, if somebody wakes you up in the night and says, God has done it, you're not worried anymore. It is the longevity, ability to keep it working in the field until it achieves what it has sent for. Faith is a servant. Oh, I'm going to teach it another day. It's your servant. So the ability to leave it in the field until it achieves, accomplishes, meditation will help you to do that. Praise the Lord. Meditating on the promises you had. When God promised you that change is coming. So it's not a one time, oh, God has promised and all. After a while, because the enemy knows this. And just as my sister is sharing here this morning, some things will come three days. That's fine. Am I speaking to somebody here? Some things will come after one week. That's fine. Some things don't come after two years. Yeah, I don't know if you have some things you are still believing God for. So what's the difference with somebody who has given up and somebody who is still connecting, holding on to God? Remember Abraham that is called the father of faith. Did he wait for two years? Who can help me with how many years Abraham waited for his child? 25. God made the promise at 75. At 100, Abraham got his child. Don't worry, yo, you will not wait 25 in Jesus' name. <laughs> he is the father of our faith. But I'm just trying to tell you what makes the difference. Praise the Lord. 
So it's not the faith you start with. It's the ability to keep it there until it produces, until you get your result. Meditation will help you to do it. Praise the Lord. So, let's go to Genesis 24, 63. Twenty-four sixty-three. Anybody can read, please. If you have any version, you can help me to read. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm reading now. And I think went out to meditate and bow down in prayer in the open country in the evening, and he looked up and saw. Stop there. Say, Isaac went out to do what? To meditate. Now, have you ever wondered, Abraham, Abraham, even Abraham, in that Genesis, is Genesis, um, I just want to show you, so Genesis 23. Can somebody quickly get Genesis 23, 13 for us? That lifting up the eyes, okay? Lifting up the eyes, okay? Genesis 23, 22, 13. Mm -hmm. 13. He says, and Abraham lifted up his eyes. This lifting up the eyes is the same expression. Okay? Now, when Jesus told also the, uh, the disciples, lift up your eyes, that the harvest is plenty. They're already ripe for harvest. He wasn't talking about the spiritual, you know, like, look, there's a harvest. It's the same lifting up of the eyes. And it has to do with meditation. Isaac was mentioned that he went out to meditate. Okay? So when you meditate, so that meditation, Isaac learned it from Abraham, okay? The patriarchs meditated. That is why the things that God told them, think about it. Somebody, you are even, we are even in a better state. We don't even have, Abraham didn't have the Bible. He was just trusting on the word that God gave him. How did God help Abraham? God showed him. Is that not so? So every night, Abraham would be meditating on what God told him. And that kept him until he received the promise. So, you know, because they are in such a situation, their situation is not like us. They live in tents. And in, the, in that part of the world, you see the whole sky, the moon, the stars. So every night, Abraham will be looking and he will be meditating on the promises of God. Do you see how it came to pass in his life? And then with the word he was speaking, Hello, I'm Abraham, the father of many nations. Hello, I'm Abraham, the father of many nations. Abraham, what are they calling him? Sir, father of many nations, come over. We need your help here. He was the repetition again. He was hearing, confessing the word, hearing it confessed because he told the people not to call him Abraham anymore. That was the same system. It's the same system. That is how all these people got what they were believing God for. Praise the Lord. So, now, meditation feeds the imagination and it's our part in allowing the Holy Spirit to paint a clear picture of our success. So, what does he meditate? Because we are talking about, remember what I told you about our mind and our imagination. Meditation fits the imagination. Now, if I'm meditating on the scriptures that has to do with wealth, and let's say that one, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was, he was rich, Jesus was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. The grace, the grace, what is grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that grace? So that means that my wealth is included in the grace of God. Hello. Your wealth is included in the grace of God. That is why, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that grace? That though he was rich, for my sake he became poor, that I, through his poverty, so if Jesus was poor, I, through his poverty, might become rich. So I can't be poor anymore. Through his poverty, I keep repeating this for myself. Before I sleep, I say it. As I wake up, I say it. I say, this is what God said. This is what God said. For I, through his poverty, is the grace of God. Is this grace? No, this grace has to work in my life. I am praying it. I am confessing it. I am speaking it. 21 days. Just 21 days. Something will begin to happen. Just 21 days. Try what we are saying today. You don't make it, don't complicate it. I want you to take something that has to do with, because we have to practicalize this. It's not even the end. There's so much we have to talk about this. And we'll take it as the Holy Spirit is leading us. What applies to that particular situation that you're facing right now? Take two or three scriptures. 
Don't take more than that. Praise the Lord. Start. Start. Repetition. Is the word, we we'll call it confession. You are repeating the word of God. You are confessing. The Bible calls it confession. Begin, okay? When you do, and you do, and you do, don't worry about faith. Don't worry about faith. But you know the beautiful thing. The more you do, after a while, you will have faith. Even if you didn't start out with any faith. When you do these things and do it properly, faith will come. Faith is automatic. It's not something you struggle with. The reason why we are struggling is because we are not the missing link again. We are not meditating in the word of God. Praise the Lord. Even when we have faith at the beginning, and I tell you why, when the enemy will start, the greatest warfare of the enemy against every child of God is circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence. I am believing God for breakthrough in my finances. And then, what is my circumstantial evidence? I am overdrawn. What is my circumstantial evidence? They call me from Africa and they abuse me well, well because I didn't contribute or I didn't have money. What is my circumstantial evidence? My bill is due and those will call you that early morning when you're supposed to have sweet sleep and spoil your mood. What is circumstantial evidence? Do you understand? That is how the enemy works. So you have to do something because it's been long in this game. God has given us everything that makes us overcomers. Praise the Lord. It will be equipped. The reason why we are suffering is because we are not using the weapons. Okay. Um, quickly, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3. Is it 3 5? If it's not 3 5, it will be 5 3. Can somebody get me 2 Corinthians 3 5 or 5 3? 2 Corinthians 3 5. Yes. This one? Okay. No. Um, Second Corinthians 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty true God. Is it 5 5? Of that same thing. Okay. Is it it's 5? Did you read 3 5? Read 5. Second Corinthians 5. Yes. 5 and 5. Then, it, then somebody will go to First Corinthians. It has to be first. Is that First Corinthians or Second Corinthians? Um, no, it's either either them. I'm I'm mixing the either First or Second Corinthians. But is is it three, verse five? Try First Corinthians three, verse five. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty true God. I want to just show us something. I can quote it off there, but I want to show you. Praise the Lord. Just put uh, Google. For the weapons of our warfare are not canal. It will come up. For the weapons of our warfare are not canal. Let somebody quickly do it. But mighty true down to the pulling down of strongholds. If you just put for the weapons of our warfare are not canal in Google, you should um, bring it up. Ten. Second Corinthians ten. Can you put it up? Okay. Second Corinthians ten, four to five. Praise the Lord. So, but what I'm trying to say is that you see, um, what is meditation? What we are talking about now, as I'm meditating on this word of God, okay? I'll tell I want to tell you practically how this happens. For the weapons of our warfare, you we need to go to um, four and five, two of them. I want to show us how practically this happens, okay? Now I am meditating on that scripture. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. So God's weapon, the weapon that God has given us is mighty, okay? That's what this place is saying. It's mighty. Not carnal means they are spiritual weapons. Because everything Satan is doing against us is also spiritual. I hope you know. Okay, the other day you guys were not here, I talked about the fourth dimension. That's where everything is. So whatever you're doing, you're going to get results. Not because you're meditating will bring it to pass. Or your confessing will bring it to pass. The reason why you have result is because in the four dimensional realm, it is already done. Okay? It is done. 
Everything that is needed for life and godliness is there. All your promises are yea and amen. They are already done. Your healing is already done. But you need to pull it to the third dimension world. Okay? Now, to get it to the third dimension, this is where the warfare is. Satan is also in the fourth dimension realm. So he projects thoughts. It, talk about circumstantial evidence. Talk about telling you you're not going to make it this time. Talk about telling you that you're a failure. All those thoughts, okay? Now, how do you overcome? He says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not mighty fleshly weapons. They are mighty, okay? Mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Do you see casting down imaginations here? You remember where I told you? The battle is between here, your mind. All the battles you're fighting is just your mind. Every battle is in your mind. Your mind is what is making you poor. Your mind is what is making you a failure. Everything is in the mind. Change the mind, you change your destiny. Praise the Lord. Change what is inside there. Casting down what? Imaginations. Do you see imaginations here? Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. All those thoughts that are anti-word. It's not in the word of God. You're going to die poor. That's not in the word of God. Cast down the imagination. Cast it. Pull it down. I pull it down. You are not my thought. But for you to successfully do this, you've been meditating on the word of God. It is the word of God. How did Jesus overcome? Is it not the word? It is written. Most of us, our problem again, we thought that we have to see Satan coaching the world to us physically. Satan walks through our mind. That's the war, that's the war zone. Those thoughts you are re you're receiving, they are not your thoughts. Thoughts come from two areas, the Holy Spirit or Satan. If it is not coming from, you know the one that will come from God now. It will not frighten you now. It will not make you afraid. The one that, that one that you did, is, it's not from you. Most of us think that most of the negative thoughts are from us. They are not your thoughts. They are not your thoughts. It comes through your mind because of the way we are wired. You won't even know that if somebody projecting it, you think, oh, if I go there now, they are going to tell me this. It's coming inside. You think it's your thought. It's not your thought. If it does not meet Philippians 4, is it Philippians 4, uh, um, Philippians 4, 6 or something, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever, you want to check every thought with that. If it doesn't fit that criteria, you do what? Pull it down. Pull it down. Praise the Lord. But the meditation part is what makes us, is the ammunition we need. That's all. Because that's the missing link. Praise the Lord. There's so much more that will continue next week. But please begin to put into practice what we are sucking here. First thing in the morning, if you have time in there, see, with this, have you thought of it? Every one of us go to work. Some of us are in school. Have you thought of it? I was telling them here before you guys came when we were praying. You know, when the Bible says that you fellowship, you fellowship with God all the time. Pray continually. Now, if I'm meditating the word of God, Jesus is the word of God. And I'm meditating. That is fellowshipping with Jesus. That gives me, it means it's the same as continual fellowship. So I'm in school. I am in school. I can still do this. Are you understanding? Because you find that you're in school, does it not mean you don't worry? You don't worry in school. You worry everywhere. And you know, even as you're doing your work, don't you worry? Yeah. So now you are changing what that originally you're made for to work for you. Praise the Lord. So as I'm in school, as I'm teaching, you stay down. The word, you bring up the scripture again inside and you start contemplating. You try to put it inside of you because you can't say it outside. You do it, you do it, you do it. If you've forgotten some of it, you even go. Because one of the things that will help you is to write it in a card. Praise the Lord. Write the scripture and say it and say it and say it. Because if you go to your phone, it will be too, um, it's not handy. Do you understand? Because you have to go to Bible and all. Write it down what you're believing for. Put it where you see it. Look at it again. Try to say it to yourself. Remember repetition. Remember repetition. In a day, for this to work the way we are, God is telling us, please try to repeat the scripture. That's why I don't want you to get so many scriptures. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Try to do it at least seven times a day. Praise the Lord. Seven times. God will help us in Jesus' name. But try. Let's see if God, because God is true, the problem is us. It's us. And, and some, because of this same thing, trauma in childhood, or you've watched somebody in your family die, or this, some of us even have 
an image. If you have had somebody die in your family of cancer, you saw how that person, how that person is skinny bones before they died. It's a traumatic experience. You need to work on your imagination. Don't assume it's not there. It may not be cancer, it could be anything. Are you listening to me? Because that image is still in the default mode. When the enemy wants to trump a card and you bring a symptom and you're feeling something, you say, this is how it started with your father. This is how it happened. If you are not doing what we are doing, and you don't even answer, and you know another problem, some of us, we don't even answer Satan. The thoughts come. We just leave it. How did Jesus do? Did he leave thoughts? You must answer. Answer with the word. Please don't leave any thought. Just there. It's not your thought. Those negative thoughts, make sure you answer to every single one. It's very, because if you don't answer, what is he doing? He's embedding it. He's getting gold. It's, it's, you know, like, you know when somebody is trying to shook something inside, inside. The next time again, you don't answer. It's getting older. It's strong, getting stronger. Before you know it, from nowhere, fear will come. It's as simple as that. This is how he's been getting us. Praise the Lord. So, I don't know if, just, let's just begin to just thank God for today. Time is against us now. Let's just begin.